This video goes through a few examples from the textbook of involving the mean of a discrete random variable. So I have the formula from the book written up at the top already. We're here, uppercase Y is the random variable, and this E stands for the expectation operator, or the mean of random variable Y. And then the formula is saying if we have uppercase J, number of different categories or possible values of Y, written as little y subscript little j, uh, then the mean can be written as this sum of each possible value multiplied by its corresponding probability. So in the first example, we have a random variable where the probabilities are all equal to one third, and the values are just one, two, and three. So if we plug that into our formula, this part here is just one third for each term, and then the values will iterate through one, two, and three in turn. So in other words, we will get one third times one plus one third times two plus one third oops, times three, where this is the j equals one term in the sum, and the j equals two term and the j equals 3 term. And if we just do the arithmetic after that, we'll get 1 third plus 2 thirds plus 3 thirds, which is 6 thirds. Um, 6 thirds, or 2. So that 2 is the mean of the random variable described by this probability distribution. Oh, maybe I'll leave that there. We can think of a different example now where there's two random variables, each with the same four possible values, one, two, three, or four but where the probabilities are different. So for random variable W, probability that W equals J is J over 10 for J equals 1, 2, 3, Four. So again, using the formula, the mean of W is the sum of the probabilities times the values. So in this case, for J equals 1, the probability is 1 tenth, and the value is 1. That's our J equals 1. Um, and just to clarify here, this instead of little yj, the values are just j itself. So maybe save some notation, but hopefully it doesn't add confusion. And then for the next possible value, which is 2, uh, the probability is 2 tenths. And the value itself is 2, 
And then similarly for j equals 3, it's 3 tenths times 3. And finally, 4 tenths times 4. And if we do the arithmetic, we get 1 tenth plus 4 tenths plus 9 tenths plus 16 tenths. And uh, altogether, we get 30 tenths or 3. Uh, and we can see if we were to change this, so now instead of W, we have Z, where we have the same probabilities, or excuse me, we have the same values, but different probabilities. We'll get a different answer. So for Z, um, instead of the highest probability on the highest value, it's flipped around to the opposite. For now the lowest value has a four-tenths probability, and then three-tenths, two-tenths, one-tenth. So now we get four-tenths plus six-tenths plus another six-tenths plus another four-tenths, which is twenty-tenths or two. So we can see, even though we have the same possible values as before, because we shifted to have more probability on the smaller values, the overall mean is lower than before. Finally, I want to think about an example. We use uh, green since we'll talk about money now. Uh, where you can imagine this is thinking about people's wage and the probability of making ten dollars an hour. This is obviously a made-up example, not realistic. Is 0.99 or 99 percent, and the probability of having an hourly wage of $3,010 per hour is 1% or 0 0.01. Now if we look at the mean, again using that same formula as before, this time there's two possible values, so j equals 2. And here, little y1 is 10, and little y2, the other possible value, is 3,010. So our mean is, again, we multiply the probability by the value plus other probability times other value, and we end up with 40, in this case meaning $40 per hour. So what this illustrates is that even though most people, 99% of people in the population, are only making $10 per hour, which is not very much. If we only look at the mean of the distribution, uh, the mean is actually a relatively high hourly wage of $40 per hour because the mean is sensitive to this very large, albeit not very probable, value. So there are other ways left for other econometrics or statistics classes uh, where we can try to learn more about different features of the distribution. Uh, for now, we'll mostly focus on the mean, but just be aware that uh, the mean can be sort of sensitive to these very large values, even if they have a relatively low probability.